and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. I'm Jim Kerr. Well, Jim, let's get right to it. Uh, Coley Campbell, Colin Campbell, the NHL disciplinarian, yeah. uh, called his job thankless this week after a ton of criticism has been thrown his way over the suspensions and, more importantly, the non-suspensions uh, in the NHL playoffs so far. I mean, let's take a look at a couple of these, eh? I mean, uh, yeah, uh, first of all, what do you, what do you think? It's about a tough job. Yeah, Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. I wouldn't want to do that job. Let's no. just start by saying that. Yes. Before we... Uh, nail him with a bunch of criticism of our own. That's right. I wouldn't want that job because Agreed. of people like us. <laughs> yes, that's right. Exactly. That being said, though, you know, the, the, the million dollars he gets paid a year probably doesn't hurt all that much or more. Uh, but let's let's take a look at a couple of the the, the, um, well, the last three uh, suspensions. So, so uh, grand total of first round suspensions up to five. Let's talk about Steve Downey. What do you think about the Steve Downey one? Major penalty yeah. for charging at most. All of a sudden, leaving your feet and going shoulder to not head. And shoulder to not head. Come on. Yeah, I don't know what. That I know is. he's got a bit of a history, but he hasn't done anything bad in a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm surprised to see that being a one-game suspension, given what I thought was the uh, precedent. Yeah, for, that's for right. Hits, which you know you can take the guy's head off and get nothing. So I thought, well, he didn't take his head off, so maybe they'll give him a game. Yeah. Like a, <laughs> in lieu in, for the yeah, next time. In, yeah, when, when Tampa gets knocked out, he'll get to play with someone else for a game. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Keeping the heads out of it. What about, uh, what about the Chris Kunitz hit? What did you think about that? It's un un unbelievable that that's yeah. one game. Yeah. You can't skate past the guy and go like this, Yeah. and then say, oh, oh. I was trying to go, I was trying to hit his shoulder with <laughs> my elbow, yeah. but I accidentally hit his head when he yeah. didn't have the puck. I was already going for the hit and just trying to follow through. Yeah. With just your elbow? Yeah. Fini like, finishing the check. Yeah. <laughs> You're not in the play to start with. No. This guy's lost the puck. Yeah. But, okay, Kunitz, yeah, that was dumb. But what's the NHL? I think the NHL is dumber. Yeah. Because the last six, week, uh, six weeks of the season six or weeks. so, yeah. uh, Heatley was given two. Yeah. Marshawn was given a couple. Cabino was given three. And all of a sudden, it's what, and they'll say, okay, well, it's the playoffs. It's playoffs, you know, more valuable games. Okay, but my argument there is the game's more important, so why are you doing dumb stuff? Yeah, in why, those, why are you throwing elbows at a guy that doesn't have a puck in front of the ref? Ah, uh, yeah, that was that right was in front of the ref. I didn't understand. I don't understand why the, why the NHL's not throwing the book. That's Agreed. the hit. Torres, there's a gray area. Yeah. That right there, though, is Straight the hit. Straight up. Yeah, but that's the one that you punish yeah. hard yeah. because you get those hits out of the game, that's, you know, half that your problem. Considering there's been, you know, four or five of them in the last couple of weeks, last six, uh, last month or so of the season, yeah. obviously it's a problem. No, completely. <laughs> Guys completely. skating past each other and just throwing Throw elbows. elbows to the head. Yeah. That's the that's the easy headshot to get out of the game. But you just say, hey, Kunitz, 10 games, see you next season. And that, Not even at the start yeah. of next season. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be absolute. That's that's the hit you put on the DVD that you send around to other yeah, teams saying, "But this but is you this shouldn't is the kind even of thing. you shouldn't even have to." Yeah. <laughs> that should just you be should it. say, "Don't elbow guys in the head." Do you need an example? <laughs> Suspended for the season. If you need an example, you're not playing this year. No, that's fair enough. I like it. Okay, okay. What about the Yarku Rutu hit? Well, again, I don't understand. Yeah. I'm trying so hard. Yeah. Mr. Campbell. To, Cole and Campbell. To, hardest hardest job in the game. Yeah, well, I'm trying. It is it is a tough job. It is. I'll, I'll say that again. But I'm trying so hard to figure out what we're looking for in terms of illegal hits. Yeah. What's suspendable and what's a penalty. If Yarko Rutu's kind of late hit, where he had both feet on the ground, he didn't, no didn't jump up with his elbow. Yep. Isn't that the excuse they used not to suspend Rafi Torres? Behind the net on Seabrook, yes. Surely open ice is a hitting area. Well, Surely I... the neutral zone is a hitting area. It's, it's a contact sport. <laughs> but f leaving, that, leaving that aside, okay. Yarko Rutu... Maybe a steamboat too late on this hit. Yeah. He catches Marty Erat. And, you know, Erat obviously was, you know, affected by the hit. He, yeah. he, he knocked out, it looked like, maybe for a second there. But um, beyond a two-minute, maybe a five-minute, how are you giving him a game and a guy like Rafi Torres who takes a guy's head off, a guy who then misses two games at yeah. least, uh, how is he not suspended? Not mentioning the fact that, of course, Torres was in his first game back from a four-game suspension, so he's a repeat offender, so... But maybe that's why they didn't suspend him, because he'd be a repeat offender at that point. Yeah. And that would mean 
a much longer suspension. And maybe that's what it is. I, don't I mean, get it, though. you know, then that's the thing. Uh, Coley Campbell, let's get back to him for a second. Says, you know, he's got this hard job or whatever, but no one knows what to look for, Jim. Yeah. That's the problem. I yeah. mean, you know, we were talking about how you look uh, at this hit and it was suspensionable, and you look at this hit, and it wasn't suspensionable, yeah. and you compare the two, and you're like, I don't see the difference! Yeah. What they have to do is, is in the offseason, yeah. just write up some criteria, 10 points of a legal hit, and 10, uh, whatever, uh, an illegal hit, just tell us what's wrong, yeah. we'll just, we'll go with it, we'll, <laughs> we'll, go with we'll that. take whatever you say, doesn't matter to me or Jeff, nope. Jeff or I, Yes, that's the one. Just, just tell us because we don't know, and that's a problem. And, it, and it's frustrating. And it's the gray area. Let's 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 get rid of this gray area, right? I mean, you and step on a guy's foot with your skate blade. Okay, suspend him. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a fair enough. That's you have your ten points. Yeah, <laughs> take a guy's head off and he doesn't see you coming. Don't suspend him. Uh huh. And then it happens again, and you do, and then it happens again, and you find the guy. I, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm sure this won't be the last time we talk about uh, <laughs> about this uh, no. this season or, or or next season. But it's got to be something that's got to be figured out. Let's move on a little bit. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings, your your Detroit Red Wings, uh, uh, Curzi. They uh, beat up on the Phoenix Coyotes. Uh, looks like uh, could be the last game played in Phoenix. Uh, I guess. What's happening there is the Goldwater Institute, which is a watchdog, kind of a tax uh, watchdog organization, uh, met with the city of Glendale, which is where the Phoenix Coyotes play, and Matthew Hulsizer, who is a potential owner of the, the Coyotes on Thursday, to discuss the deal that will see the city uh, give him a pile of money to help him buy the team, mm. which I like that. Yeah. Uh, but nothing really came out of the meeting. Hulsizer <coughs> didn't saying. even stay till the end. Yeah, which is halfway through. <laughs> uh, I gotta go, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna give me the money, or what? <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, Goldwater says it'll sue to block the transaction because it violates state laws. Uh, Jim, give us a lowdown. Are they, are, 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 is Phoenix leaving? The Goldwater guys said the cupcakes served at the start were tastier than the conversation. Oh, <laughs> yeah, very nice. articulate. I wonder if they had I don't know. beforehand. I, I don't know, Jeff, because yeah. if this deal doesn't doesn't go through, which it looks like the damage has maybe been done, even if they do come to some kind of agreement, the bonds they're trying to sell, the interest yeah. is driven up, and I, you know, business things. Which but, we talk sports. You know, yeah, like yeah. But I, it seems like maybe the damage has been done, and and maybe Hull Sizer is getting a bit rattled by the whole thing. Frustrated. And, I know I would be. Yeah, and maybe the, you know, if, if they do follow through on this lawsuit, the uh, city of Glendale doesn't think they will. Uh, if they do follow through on the lawsuit, it'll delay, 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 and the NHL might just say, you know what, we don't have time for this. We've owned the team for two years. Two years now, <laughs> yeah. we got to get rid of it. Exactly. And plus, if they are going to do something with it, they have to do it soon because they don't have all the time in the world. No. The season starts in October. Uh, let's, say, uh, let's say Phoenix does move. Where, where, where are they going? Yeah. Well, everyone seems to think it's Winnipeg. Going to Winnipeg. But I think that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that, but that's because uh, there's rumor has it there's a, a deal already kind of a backup deal already worked out with True North and the the guy that owns Reuters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that would be why they'd be going to Winnipeg. But there, you know, there may be some other deals that prop up once we uh, once we find out that the Phoenix thing isn't going to happen anymore. Right. Uh, I'm sure, again, this is not going to be the last time we talk about this, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to move on to the Gabbies right now. This is the good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst of the world of sport, uh, given to us by you, and uh, which is it's in the name. Yeah, and, <coughs> yeah, and, uh, it up, and we talk about it. Yeah, there you go. You're, you're there. Uh, so we'll start out with uh, Stokeby Bol uh, Bolton 5 nothing on the weekend to advance to the final of England's FA Cup, where they'll face Man City after they beat cross-town rivals Man United. Uh, the reason we're giving a good to soak here is because it'll be the first FA Cup uh, in the 148 year history which I love that there's 150 years of history yeah well, uh, not quite Jeff well go get it get in there get in there uh, the 5-0 score is also the biggest margin in semi-final since 1939 uh, what's really interesting to me here Jim is that <clears throat> you know you've got a team that hasn't hasn't done that in 148 years and okay. not only are they doing it but they're doing it in style you know 5-0 yeah. win in the semi-final Let's be honest; they probably won't win. No, probably but, not. <laughs> but still. But that's a that, that's fun for a for a club whose fans maybe haven't had too much success over oh, the years. Exactly. No, they're going to get some notoriety. It's going to be nice. Yeah. Speaking of success, yes. Jeff, Corey Crawford. Oh, Corey Crawford is rocketing up the uh, offensive charts right now. You're saying to yourself, he's a goalie. Corey isn't Crawford. He? Yeah. yeah. Thirty six saves and a point. And a point on Thursday night. That gives him a two game point streak coming into the weekend. In the last two games, he's outscored who? Daniel and Henrik 
combined. <laughs> oh wow! Probably more players than that too, because yeah. they only they've only scored two goals in that in that span. But, That's right. But still, he's, he's got two points to their one. Outscoring over that over wins. that two yeah. two game span. Uh, you like gotta it. give a good to that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I wonder if Vancouver's telling them to shut up and go uh, go back yeah. to their mother's basement. <laughs> Uh, it was announced this past week that uh, Detroit, or no, Detroit, wow, I said it, Detroit Steve yeah. Eiserman, no, Tampa Bay Steve Eiserman is uh, one of the three finalists for uh, GM of the Year after his first season as general manager. The Lightning improved greatly under Eiserman, which he really did, and it's impressive to see him marked in the top three after just one year. Uh, cool. Within that same good, Peter Forsberg was named assistant GM of his hometown club, Moto, of the Swedish Elite League uh, this week, uh, where his boss will be his uh, his friend Marcus Naslin. So there's a couple of goods there for, for some good yeah, old boys there. Guys. I like Sack like joining the front yeah. office. You got Eisenman excelling. We're gonna go to the bad side yes. though right now, Jeff, and and we're gonna still talk about front office former players. Patrick Waugh, yes, who is a uh, the GM of the Quebec Rempar, ah. the QMJHL, got into a bit of trouble this past As week. Fined two thousand dollars. Why, Jeff? Yeah. He told another GM or said about another GM that he had the brain the size of a pea. Hmm. Two thousand bucks. <sighs> The, the other guy said that there needs to be more security at the uh, at the Rempar Stadium, uh, the Coliseum, because they had garbage thrown at them. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got the brain the size of a size of a pea. Yeah, yeah it probably sounded more cool in French. <laughs> probably. But the brain the size of a pea. <laughs> that's that's some good French. Yeah, I like thanks. that. Yeah, that's good. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we like his fashion there? I mean, uh, <laughs> I yeah. The thing about <laughs> the thing about Wa is that he was always like this. He's always kind of a, a jerk, right? Yeah. But he could take it out on the opposing team. He could just st- shut the door, and that's how yeah. he did it. And now he doesn't really have anything other than the media to. I couldn't hear you because my Stanley Cup <laughs> rings are plugging my ear. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go on to another bad year. Cincinnati Reds pitcher Mike Leak was uh, arrested this past week after allegedly trying to steal six shirts worth about $60 from a downtown store. Yeah, that's right, Jim. Uh, a guy making uh, $420,000 this season is accused mm. of stealing a bunch of $10 shirts. The 23-year-old could face up to 180 days in jail, but if he's found uh, guilty, I doubt he'll get any time in the clink. Uh, do we give this the uh, the Lindsay Lohan award, stealing award of the week? <laughs> what are you thinking, man? <laughs> $20,000, man. I heard on, I heard on uh, the radio this, this week that one of the reports is that he took the tags off and tried to walk out with the six. What are you, what, what are you doing? I hope it's not true, but come on, hey, man. You're making shirts. all kinds of money. It's not the NFL lockout. <laughs> That's right. Your lockout is until next year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and finally in the bat, speaking of yes. the MLB, they've taken over financial control of the LA Dodgers. Yep. There's a messy divorce going on there. Um... Between the owners. Between the owners, yeah, yeah of course. But that means that the MLB, yep. the NBA, and the NHL, and the NHL all own or financially control a team. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. Has that, do you think that's ever happened before? No, I, I don't think, I think it's would, ever happened before. It. I mean, it's at least not in something this major. I mean, maybe in minor league, t- minor league leagues, I, I guess you'd see something like that. But it, it's just amazing that, uh, that that would happen. And you keep hearing about, oh, the, the financial stability of these leagues. And, oh, we're doing great, we're doing great, we're doing yeah. great. And... and well, I guess, I guess you could say in the NFL right now, they have, the owners have no players. <laughs> yeah, so they right. have teams with no players. With no players, exactly. Uh, we're going to move on to quick hits now. we got a couple of good ones here. The winner of the Boston Marathon, uh, Kenyan Jeffrey Mutai. Good name, Jeffrey. Probably doesn't get uh, a world record because there's a downhill portion of the Boston Marathon. So they're not going to give this guy a world record. He, he, he beat the world record because the Boston Marathon is considered too easy. How about that, Jim? Anytime I've ever run more than a couple of minutes, <laughs> the downhill part's the tough part because you're, right. you're not you, it's exactly. too fast for your legs that's that's dumb totally totally you got it come on exactly uh, the boston marathon boston marathon give, him, give the guy a world's record Latest rankings have uh, Nugent Hawkins, Hopkins at number one, Larson at number two, Couturier at number three, and Landis Cog at number four. Does that change our outlook on the draft at all? Uh, no. No, no I, don't I think, think so. I think we're going to stick to our guns. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um... So the NBA refs, uh, they came out last week and said that a ref had missed a key call in the late stages of the Nuggets loss to the Thunder. Uh, it's kind of refreshing to see the NBA uh, NBA say, hey, yeah, we were wrong, even if you only get a story. I'd like to see that uh, in a couple of other leagues. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. In the NHL from time to time. Uh, instead, there was... instead, of, instead of, oh, he meant to blow the whistle. The yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We're going to have to quick one more. There's a, uh, a fastball by uh, Chapman this week. It was so fast that even the radar guns didn't know what to make of it. The in-house <laughs> ones is 100 
106 miles per hour. Which would have been a record. The MLB one says 105 miles per hour. Which ties his record. Uh, how ridiculous is this guy? <laughs> the guy can throw. Guy My can throw. goodness. Absolutely. One more thing, Jeff. Are, yep. you, go, are you going to watch, uh, uh, watch FC Edmonton face Toronto FC on Wednesday? I, I'd like Wednesday? to. I think I'm going to go. Yeah, I mean, what, uh, Toronto FC is a good good team. It's going to be a big, big game. FC Edmonton 2-1 to start the yeah. season. Absolutely. NASL. Their uh, next home game is against the Montreal Impact. Yeah, that yeah. should be fun. Should be a good game. Right. I like it. Uh, well, that's our 15 minutes up for this week. Uh, check us out again next week when we get a whole new 15 minutes of fame. In the meantime, from the home offices in Edmonton, Alberta, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Have a good week, folks.